further i just want to let you know that we are now on itunes now i put out a lot of content every week and i know that it's not easy for you to watch two three hours of breakdown videos on youtube and if you leave the audio running in the background on your phone it's just going to kill your battery so finally we have been approved by itunes which means from now on i will put all the audio from my breakdown videos on the onto itunes so you can listen to them when you're taking the kids to school in the car doing housework, walking the dog, whatever you like to do. So to find the audio, to find the podcast on iTunes, all you need to do is hit the podcast app. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this. Then all you need to do is go to search. Bam, there it is. And search for The Money Cast. And if you search for The Money Cast, there it is, right there. Bam, this is us right here, The Money Cast on itunes you've already got five stars so big thank you to everyone that's reviewed uh, or left left a rating and please also guys leave a review if you can we've only got one review so far so if you like my content please consider writing me a review so yeah all the audio from my videos will now be posted on the itunes and i called it the money cast because i want uh, i want to start putting out much more content than just ufc and gambling related content in the future i want to proud stuff relating to investing crypto business the works everything loads of different stuff so by calling it the money cast doesn't really uh, nail us down to just ufc and gambling it opens the door to produce content and podcast content for everything which will hopefully be coming in the future so please subscribe to the new podcast channel thing and i'm sure what you call it on itunes and leave a review and also guys before we go any further into the video just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has watched my video so far and subscribed to the channel if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so and if every single video that i put out for ufc russia gets 150 likes so parts one two three and four if they all get 150 likes i will do a live stream video on fight day at around about 1 p.m uk time which will be three hours or two or three hours before the event scheduled to start where again i will answer all your questions relating to this card all your questions relating to bankroll management money management anything you want i did a live stream for ufc 236 on saturday that lasted three hours and it was three hours long because i will not leave until I've answered everyone's questions. So if you want that, please hit the thumbs up button below. And also in that video, I will try and find a decent value prop bet for every single fight taking place this weekend. And a prop bet would be something highly specific, such as uh, a better example would be Alistair Overeem to win inside the distance. That would be an example of a prop bet. So I'll go through every fight on the card and try and find one of those. But before we jump into talking about this week's fights let's go back and have a look at how we did last week obviously we did pretty good i did say that israel adesanya was going to be one of my well it was going to be my biggest pre-fight bet of the year and leading up to the fight uh, we had also done very very well in live betting well not very very well actually that's an overstatement we didn't do very very well in live betting we did pretty good enough to be able to have quite a significant amount of money ready to go and fire off on adesanya when the fight was ready to start so that was cool. So big bet on Adesanya, my biggest pre-fight bet of the year. A very, very decent sized bet on Baylor Mohammed as well. So Adesanya and Mohammed came through for us. Although to be honest with you, I did uh, the fights were definitely more difficult than I thought they would be. Gaslam did a lot better than I expected him to do. And also Curtis Melendez takedown defense looked pretty good in round one. I was quite surprised. Had me sweating a little bit, but thankfully uh, hadn't improved his takedown enough to prevent Bailal from putting him on the ground in rounds two and three and absolutely dominating. The only loss for pre-fight betting was a very small one unit bet on Ovin St. Pru. You know, it was always going to be a risk. What I can say is the fight pretty much played out how we thought it would. I mean, not many guys can be mounted by Ovin St. Pru and end up surviving and fighting out of it. But Krylov did a great job to fight his way out of a bad position in round one. As we know, OSP slows down as the fight progresses. What can you do? It was a one unit gamble. It didn't pay off. But luckily, because we had big bets on Adesanya and Mohamed, it more than covered that. And we ended the night with a really decent profit on both pre-fight betting and live betting. Live betting also went really good in the end, although it was slow up until the main card. But we got it in. 
and uh, making money is the most important thing. So now we turn our attention ahead to this weekend, UFC Russia, a fight that is absolutely dominated by guys making their UFC debut, which is interesting. I love researching these cards simply because the bookies won't take the time to do their homework, which means there can often be good opportunities to make money because they don't really know a lot about the fighters making their debut and they're not going to spend the time uh, trying to find out. They'll let the public correct their odds for them. But on cards like this, casual gamblers don't really spend that much time researching. They don't really care. They'll just kind of be a bit reckless. And that means KG there can be good betting opportunities right up until fight day. So the first fight that I want to talk about in today's video is a fight that, um, well, it does feature a debutant, to be honest. And the reason why I'm covering it first is because it's between Magomed Mustafayev and Rafael Fiziev. And the reason why I'm getting into this fight first is because Mustafayev was one of the first names that jumped out at me. Mustafayev's a, a, an absolutely great fighter, very tough, decent cardio, got that Russian sambo background, reasonably good at everything, hits hard, absolute nightmare on the ground so when i saw that he was you know not a big favorite to be honest with you against a guy making their ufc debut that definitely piqued my interest because as we know guys that make their ufc debut lose a massive percentage of the time octagon jitters are a very real thing so you know when i see a guy like magomed mustafayev uh, fighting a guy making their ufc debut i would expect mustafayev to be an absolute enormous favorite to be honest with you so these odds definitely got me interested sorry my dog has decided to play right in the doorway sorry about that appreciate really apologize but uh, he loves to make a, a special guest appearance on these videos but when i actually looked into fiziev uh, i was quite surprised to be honest with you he's very very good no doubt about it he's excellent and while Mustafayev's not a picnic for anyone. I could definitely see why the odds are where they are and why even against a beast like Mustafayev, we're not seeing Fiziev as a big underdog. And before I go any further, I'm just going to play one of Fiziev's recent fights in the background. So this was against Kim Sung Yoon, which took place back in June 2017 so this is almost two years ago so you would have expected um you would have expected fiziev to be quite a bit better than this having two years to develop and improve training at an amazing gym like tiger muay thai which is one of the best mma gyms in the world so this fights for two years ago so the version of fiziev that shows up and performs on saturday night against mustafayev I would expect to be much better than this. So I'm just going to play this in the background for you to watch. Because there's nothing really specific that I want to call out and, and say about Fiziev. But he just looks excellent. He's a very technical striker. Very dangerous. You can see that he's very well trained. I'm, I'm training at Tiger Muay Thai. Tiger MMA. Tiger Muay Thai. Wherever they want to call themselves these days. It's one of the best MMA gyms in the world. You know that, that Fiziev is going to be well rounded. So, when you go back and watch Fiziev's past fights, he reminds me a lot of Mirbek Taysomov. There you see that really crisp, sharp, technical body kick that he threw. He reminds me of Taysomov a lot because Taysomov also fights or trains out of Tiger Muay Thai. Or he did train out of Tiger Muay Thai for a large period of his career. And Fiziev's got a very, very similar style. He's got that compact frame but he really commits hard and sits down to all his shots. But at the same time, he's able to remain very technical with it. And he's also very good defensively. And with a guy like Fiziev, you know, there will be... I'll just pause this a sec while we look at his record. I've no doubt there's going to be tons of guys out there betting Mustafayev because they will use the classic argument that Fiziev hasn't fought anyone. Which is the stupidest argument that I have ever heard in my life about anyone. I always say it doesn't matter who a fighter has beaten or who they haven't fought or who they have fought. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the skills that are displayed inside the octagon. And you do not have to be an expert to know that Fiziev is just extremely good. I mean, we had it a few months back when we bet on Mike Grundy. People were writing Mike Grundy off saying he hadn't fought anyone. But like I say, just because they haven't fought anyone 
doesn't mean they're not legit. You can only beat what's put in front of you. Even just this past weekend, people were calling Adesanya all hype because he hadn't fought anyone. It's just a ridiculous argument to make. You can tell how good someone is by the skills they demonstrate in the cage. And Fiziev is amazing based on the skills he demonstrates in the cage. But the only problem with Fiziev is it, because he has fought a relatively low level of opponent. You see Sam Bastin was 6-6. Six and six. This guy Nabiev made his debut. Bahadur was 2-5. and five. Yun Kim 2-1. and one. You know... He's fought a really low level of opponent. And the problem with that is, even though the weaker see his striking is super legit, very technical, vicious KO power in every strike, good defensively, we don't know anything about his takedown defense and ground game. Now, he trains a Tiger Muay Thai. And even though Tiger Muay Thai you know, goes by the name of Muay Thai, it's not actually predominantly a striking gym. They do it all over there. And they've got absolute monsters over there that train wrestling jiu-jitsu it's a very very good gym to, to train at in my opinion it's one of the top three gyms in the world up there with att it is a brilliant gym and whilst we can't be sure the fiziev's got good takedown defense the vast majority of fighters that come out of tiger muay thai do have good takedown defense and they do have a good ground game and they are difficult to hold down so it's making a bit of an assumption, but I would guess Fiziev's quite difficult to take down and hold down. Now, this is a tough fight for betting because Fiziev looks amazing. He really does look amazing. And as he finds his range in this first round and starts to get more comfortable, you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. But it's a difficult fight for betting because we don't know anything about Fiziev's ground game and takedown defense. We can assume it'll be decent training at Tiger Muay Thai. But at the same time, we know that Octagon Jitters are the real deal. And we know that a massive percentage of fighters that make their UFC debut actually lose. So if, you know, there are a multitude of things that could impact how Fiziev looks on fight night on Saturday night. You know, maybe he looks so good here because he's built his career up built his skills up taking performance enhancing drugs and now that he's for performing you know under the banner of USADA for the first time maybe he won't look as good we see that happen quite often you know look at Ariane Lipsky when she made her UFC debut against Joanne Calderwood he was like looking at a completely different person from how she performed in KSW so there's always that element of risk in there so I would I have I will only bet on a fighter making their UFC debut under exceptional circumstances if I see something exceptionally good. And even though I would say Fiziev is very, very good, Mustafayev's no picnic for anyone. He's a tough guy, strong grappler, heavy-handed, legit KO power in every strike, cardio for three rounds, and he is a massive step up in competition. Fiziev's never fought anyone anywhere near as good as Mustafa before so you can't bet fizzy if here you just can't and I'm kind of talking and talking and talking and talking because I just want you to see the end of this this first round it only lasts for another minute and a half and fizzy just shows that he's got a killer instinct he's very technical and here we go he's got Sun Young hurt and he is going for the kill fizzy in many ways reminds me of a Peter Yan very technical very tough, good cardio, very aggressive. And who knows, maybe he's a strong wrestler with a decent ground game as well. But here you can see he's not letting Seung Young off the hook. Showing great Muay Thai skills here. Going for the kill. And we'll just watch this sequence play out. Very, very, very dangerous. That is it. So you can see Fiziev's absolutely legit. So if we look at this fight from a betting perspective, Fiziev is odds are currently around about an average of 2.45, which is plus 145, giving him an implied probability of 41%. And like I say, guys, such a large percentage of guys that make the UFC debut lose. I'm not interested in betting Fiziev at these odds just because again we don't know what his takedown defense and ground game is going to be like we don't know how he's going to look in the ufc under the bright lights of competing on the big show for the first time and mustafa has a big step up in competition but at the same time if we look at the odds on mustafa currently around about an average of 1.61 which is minus 164 
for an implied probability of 62%. Again, I don't feel like Mustafaev's a very good bet either, because if we look at his record, we can see that he's been out for two and a half years now. He actually retired after fighting Kevin Lee. He suffered a really bad broken arm injury in this fight against Kevin Lee and then put on social media that he retired, but he's back now. So who knows what's been going on with him? Who knows what his motivation's like? This is a this fight's a very easy pass for me, guys. I mean, Mustafayev deserves to be the favourite. He's very good at everything. He's very dangerous. Strong grappler. Um, UFC experience. Find a guy making their debut, but at the same time, with a two and a half year layoff and with Fiziev being so dangerous, this fight is just not one I would recommend betting. An easy, easy pass. I would definitely pass on that one. So now if we move on to the next fight, we are going to be talking about Gazimurad Antigulov against Mikhail Oleksiejuk. How is my Russian and Polish pronunciations of those names there? And we are going to this fight because I said Mustafaev was one of the first names that jumped out at me. Well, Oleksiejuk was also one of the names that jumped out at me because I have been quite impressed with Oleksiejuk, to be honest with you. You know, he did have a, a little run-in with USADA after his win against Khalil Roundtree, which is why this is ruled a no contest. But again, he looked very good against Jean Valente. And at just 24 years old, it's not the end of the world from getting popped by PDs because he's not one of these guys like Avito Belfort who's built their entire career up off PDs and now they're dependent on them. You know, he's young enough to learn to perform without them. You know, Brian Ortega was popped for PEDs and, and he looks better than ever since coming back from his suspension from USADA. So not too worried about how that will impact Oleksiejuk's career. He looked very sharp, very technically. He looked to have improved against Jean Belante in his last fight, even though it didn't last very long. So I am quite high on him, to be honest. He's a tough Russian, uh, sorry, a tough Polish fighter. He looks very, very good. Um, and the reason why Oleksiejuk was one of the first names that jumped out at me was because from his past fights, we know that he's got knockout power. We know that we know that he's very tough. We know he's got a good chin. We know he's got good cardio. We know he's well-rounded. And Andy Gulov's last performance against Ion Kutilaba was absolutely terrible, to be honest with you. It was a very, very strange performance from Andy Gulov. You know, he was looking great. He was taking Kutilaba down at will dominating him on the ground but then around about the three and a half to four minute mark of this first round anti Gulov literally gassed out like that it came out of nowhere he just got very tired completely gassed out and Kutilaba was able to get the finish at the end of the first round now the the, the issue I have with what happened to anti Gulov in that fight was that if the reason why Oleg Zajuk jumped out at me was because if Anti Gulov only shows up with three or four minutes of cardio against Oleg Zajuk, he's going to get destroyed. There's no doubt about it. You know, unless he gets an early finish, Oleg Zajuk's going to weather the early storm, take him into the second and third round, and, and get a finish. There's no doubt about it. But it's 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 tricky for me this fight because. I'm not, I just don't want to write Anti Gulov off yet. Sorry, guys, got something in my eye. Don't want to write Anti Gulov off yet because he's only 32 years old. He's Russian, and Russians tend to have pretty legendary cardio. And it was just so bizarre how he gassed out against Kutilaba. Now, there could be many reasons for why Anti Gulov gassed out. You know, if we look at through his record, the majority of his fights ended have ended in the first round so maybe he doesn't know how to pace himself or maybe he doesn't have very good cardio because he thinks he can get everyone out of there in the first round so doesn't train very hard maybe it's a training issue maybe it's a diet issue maybe it's a genetic issue maybe he did build his career off using peds and now that he's competing in the ufc with usada he can't use peds Maybe his cardio is suffering, you know, something that we spoke about as a potential risk factor for betting Fiziev. But at the same time, it's also possible that he was suffering an injury through training camp, which meant that he couldn't train as hard. Maybe he got sick during fight week. Maybe he had a bad weight cut. There are lots of reasons why he may have gassed out so fast against Kutilaba. And that 
the, the reasons don't necessarily indicate that he has bad cardio going forward. It might have just been a bad night for him, which makes betting this fight a little tricky because we don't really know anything about Oleg Zajuk's takedown defense and ground game. You know, prior to coming into the UFC, he fought a relatively low level of opponent on the Polish regional MMA circuit. And in his two fights in the UFC, he has fought, you know, strikers. These these guys, Roundtree and Volante, haven't tried to take him down. So while in Oleg Zajuk's past fights, he's shown flashes of decent takedown defense, the jury is still out on him. And even though Ante Gulov did gas hard inside four minutes of his last fight against Kutalaba, you could tell that there's absolutely no doubt about it that he is a very high-level grappler, extremely technical, definitely got a dangerous Sambo background. And if he did show up with cardio for three rounds, you know, if Oleg Zajic's takedown defense isn't on point, it could be a very tough night for him. I mean, Ante Gulov is very, very technical in his grappling and cause a lot of guys problems. It really comes down to what his cardio looks like. And like I said, it's tough to write off a 32-year-old Russian as having bad cardio based on one performance. You know, maybe he was sick. Maybe he was injured. Who knows? Which makes this fight very tricky for betting, to be honest with you. So if we look at the odds at the moment, the odds available on Antigulov, the average odds are around about 2.75, which is plus 175 for an implied probability of 36%. Now, with how bad Antigulov looked in his last fight against Kutalaba, there's no way that I would bet him because if he gasses out again after three or four minutes against Oleg Zajuk, he's absolutely screwed. But then if we look at the odds on Oleg Zajuk, say we'll just call it around about 1.50 which is minus 200 for an implied probability of 67 percent you know in order to in order to bet Oleg Zajuk here you've got to give him around about a 75 percent chance of winning this fight which is a stretch because when you think about it anti has got home advantage on his side he's a dangerous grappler Oleg Zajuk's takedown offense and ground games never really been tested there's a risk of bad judging like I say, Andy Gulov, home advantage. There's disqualifications. Oleg Zajic might be coming in with an injury, a sickness. He might, you know, have a bad weight cut. Capping someone at 75% is always difficult in MMA. And there are too many risk factors here for me to co feel comfortable pulling the trigger on Oleg Zajic at those odds. Now, if his odds improved a bit, maybe I would change my mind. But at the current odds, it is another easy pass. Sorry to be boring, but... We are trying to make money here. We're not trying to trying to place bad bets and gamble. So again, it's another easy pass for me, guys. It's a tough fight for Andrew Gulov based on his last fight against Kutilaba. But if he shows up with three-round cardio, it could be a tough fight for Oleg Zajuk. So I recommend passing. And then the final fight that I want to talk about in today's video is the one that you're probably the most interested in. It is the main event between Alistair Overeem and Alexei Oleg Zajuk. Now... Straight off the bat, I've seen people say that they think Olenek Ole, is a uh, is a good bet, or, or you know they're thinking of betting Olenek, and that's cool. But if you are going to bet Olenek, just know that this is a very easy fight for Alistair Overeem. It is a very, 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 very easy stylistic matchup for Overeem, and in, in order for Overeem to lose this, something crazy is going to have to happen, which is very possible because. Lots of crazy shit happens when Overeem and Olenek fight. So, wouldn't surprise me if something crazy went down and Olenek found a way to win this. But skill for skill, it is a terrible matchup for Olenek and a very, very easy stylistic matchup for Overeem. I mean, Overeem should win this because Olenek's got non-existent striking defense. He is so easy to hit. He's just so slow. He's got no head movement. His reflexes are shot. He just cannot get his head out of the way of his opponent's strikes. And that's obviously a big problem when you're probably facing the most decorated striker in heavyweight MMA history. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than Alistair Overeem when you look at his entire body of work over his career. And we also know that Overeem, one of his big weaknesses is his chin. Is there's, that, That's let him down throughout his career so many times. You know, I think across his kickboxing and pro MMA career, this guy's been KO'd like 20 times. I'm not going to say his chin is made of glass because he has consistently fought against 
the toughest guys in the world for the vast majority of his career. So naturally, when you're facing tougher guys, you're going to be putting yourself in the firing line a lot more than, you know, a guy who's worked his way up fighting average guys. But there's no doubt that over him's chin, you wouldn't want to bet on it. It's not exactly granite. But that's interesting because when Overeem fights, his chin is always a risk factor. It's always something that you can point to to giving his opponent a chance of winning. But Alexei Olenek's not really dangerous standing at all. He's got a very low-level technique, very sloppy striking. He's very slow and very predictable. I'm not saying he can't knock Overeem out. I'm just saying it's exceptionally unlikely. Because not only does Olenek not really carry that much power in his hands, but he's also very, very predictable. And over him should be able to see his shots coming from a mile away and either get out of danger or land a big counter because Olenek's very slow and he doesn't really move his head that much. He's very easy to hit. Also, one of Overeem's most dangerous weapons is his kicks. He's got vicious body kicks, vicious leg kicks. And if you go watch Olenek fight... He's got badly injured knees that are always strapped up and he stands heavy on his lead leg. So Overeem can inflict a significant amount of damage with leg kicks in this fight. And we know the best counter to a leg kick is a punch in the face straight down the middle. But Olenek's just not fast enough to counter with that technique. Overeem should be able to land vicious hard leg kicks and get out of danger before Olenek's even registered the shot and is even thinking about a counter. And we also know that because of Olenek's age, you know, he's now 41 years old, because of his injured knees, he's also not the most athletic, which means even though he's primarily a grappler and he's dangerous on the ground, doesn't really have any offensive wrestling at all to get his opponents down. He really struggles to get in deep on his opponent's hips and complete takedowns. You know, when Olenek is able to get his opponents down it tends to be again because something crazy happens like you know his opponent turns their back on him and he ankle picks him or you know they they struggle with the pressure that he's putting on him and they make a mistake and they slip and he jumps all over him when his fights go to the ground it tends to be under strange circumstances which when you're facing someone like Overeem isn't good because Overeem has great footwork very calm sees everything he's patient He's got good takedown defense. He's difficult to hold down. It's not going to be easy for Olenek to get over him to the ground. And even if he does get over him to the ground, what I would say is Olenek is quite dangerous on the ground. I think it's fair to say that. You know, he's caused a lot of guys a lot of problems on the ground. But he doesn't have the best top control. He does give his opponents a lot of space to scramble back to their feet. And as we know, over him is very difficult to hold down. Please don't judge Olenek's skills based on the guys that he's fought. Trust me, it is much easier to put guys like Travis Brown, Victor Pester, Junior Albini and Mark Hunt in trouble on the ground than it will be to put a guy like Alistair Overeem on the ground. So, if I just make sure I've covered everything off. Yeah, just to summarise really, this is a fight that I do think Overeem's going to win easily. I really, really do. If we look at the odds on this fight, we've got Al uh, Alexei Olenek at around about, call it an average of 3.0, which is plus 200, giving him an implied probability of 33%. I mean, there's just no way I would bet Olenek in this fight. I hate to bet on guys. I would compare this, I would compare this bet to if, I would compare this bet to betting on Nico Price a few weeks ago against Tim Means. Then it really depends on what kind of better you are. I'm not saying Olenek can't win this because we see chaos in many of Overeem's and many of Olenek's past fights. Just like we see chaos in Nico Price's past fights where he finds a way to win. But based on how both these guys match up, Overeem should absolutely start him. Just like Tim Mean should have absolutely started Price. So in order for Olenek to win this, something crazy is going to have to happen. And when I look at bets like this, I literally don't think there's any difference in placing a bet on Olenek or going playing craps or blackjack or roulette. It's a total gamble. It's just not a good bet at all. Olenek is not a good bet. He's second best everywhere. And Overeem has the skills to absolutely destroy him. So I would definitely not recommend betting Olenek here. I'm not saying he can't win. I'm just saying 
it's not a smart bet. He doesn't really have a path to victory. Something silly would have to happen in order for him to win. And it absolutely, absolutely could go that way. It's just not personally something I would recommend betting on. So if we look at the odds on Alistair Overeem, currently around about an average of 1.43, which is minus 233 for an implied probability of 70%, which is 70%. And this is a tough one for me. This really is a tough one for me, guys, because this is an easy fight for Overeem. Make no mistake about it. I know there's going to be a bunch of guys uh, saying there's value on Olenek or whatever, but you know there's value on everyone on in MMA if you dig hard enough it's a fist fight in a cage at the end of the day it doesn't change the fact that Overeem is significantly better than Olenek in every single aspect of MMA and Olenek doesn't really have the weapons to hurt him but I've been doing great this year I'm not going to lie to you I'm at a substantial profit in both pre-fight and live betting and with a guy like Overeem I just don't know if I could ever trust him with my money at these odds. I just don't. You know, I always say that in order for me to bet on a fighter, I absolutely have to love it and think it's a great opportunity. And betting a guy like Overeem at these odds just doesn't excite me, just for a few reasons, really. I mean, Overeem does have a glass jaw. Um, Olenek's not particularly dangerous standing, but it's a heavyweight fight and anything can happen. You know, Olenek's a tough Russian. He's got home advantage on his side. Uh, Overeem has been known to quit in the past when he's been put in bad positions. So who knows what happened? What might happen if Olenek does manage to get on top of him? I mean, if I were to bet Overeem here, it wouldn't be a bet that I love just because there's not that much of a payoff in the odds. In order to bet Overeem here, you have to give him a 75% or better chance of winning, which I think is fair. But it just means there's not that great a margin over the betting side. You're not getting a great deal. So I don't love this bet. I think Overeem wins easily. But it's just not getting me excited. And the way I look at this is, with bets like this, this is where discipline comes in. Because we've crushed it all year in pre-fight and live betting. We're at massively. We've made a lot of money. Our, our betting account balances are looking good. Life is good. We are comfortable at the moment. What is the point in taking good money that we've made over the last few months and putting it in harm's way on a bet like this, which isn't really a good deal? I always use the example of going clothes shopping. You know, sometimes you'll go out into a clothes shop and they'll have a sale on. And you'll see a really nice jacket there that you like, yeah? And you'll go up to the jacket and then you'll look at the price tag and it's really expensive and you think fuck that i'm not buying that it's not worth that that's way too expensive yeah that that that's that's a bet like the the you know the oleg zajuk type bet where you know you like the jacket you like oleg zajuk you'd love to buy it but you're not paying that price then you've got the deal where you love a jacket in a shop you go up to it, you see the price, it's an amazing price, it's good value, you take it straight to the counter and buy it, yeah? That's the Bailon Mohammed bet last week. Bailon Mohammed, the odds of 1.81, almost even money, was fucking ludicrous. Those odds were way off. That's a good deal. That's the kind of bet I like. And then you've got the jacket, which you go up to it, there's a sale on, you want a good deal, you don't really need a jacket, you don't really need a jacket, but this jacket looks good. And if it's a good price, you're going to buy it. But you go up to it, you see the price. And it's a fair price. You're like, ah, you know, it's a fair price. I don't really need a jacket. And you put it back on the hanger and you walk out. That's Alistair Overeem right here. It's a good price. The price is accurate. It's a fair price. But if you don't need to gamble this week, if you don't need the dopamine hit, if you don't need the adrenaline rush of gambling, if you are in this to make money, why bother putting your money in harm's way? We're up huge this year. We're up huge this year. I've already spotted some decent bets on next week's card, which I think is UFC on ESPN Plus 8. There's just no need to put money in harm's way. Just chill. Just chill. Who knows? There might be some decent bets on this card. 
don't put your money in marginal situations. Only put your money in strong positions. And I don't personally feel like Overeem's a strong position, even though I expect him to win easily. So that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the thumbs up button below. If this video and every other video that I put out this week gets 150 likes, I will do the live stream a few hours before UFC Russia this weekend. And also, don't forget to check out the podcast channel on the iTunes app. Leave a review five star me if you would i would really appreciate it and also let me know what you think about what i said in today's video do you agree do you disagree let me know in the comments below but take care guys i'll be back tomorrow with part two and another three fights hope you have a great night too many thoughts on my mind i can't sleep at night so i just keep writing i don't need no help i don't need opinions so don't waste my time then i just been living online my city don't show me no love and that's fine fuck local radio stations i got more plays than all of these rappers combined i'm going i'm going again i've been going in i'm fed up with so many things i gotta just let it all out i'm talking about the shit they've been talking